This is my motion activated audio switch. Um, it is based off of a store bought motion activated LED light, uh, just a battery operated LED light. Took three AAA batteries, uh, which puts it in at four and a half volts. Actually, let me start with, with the concept. Um, there's, I'm doing this for a friend who was needing a way to play video, but only play the sound of the video when someone walked up to the TV. Um, this is going to be an informational video going in a lobby. Uh, the staff that work at this building don't want the audio playing all the time, um, only when someone's actually watching it. So um, this was what I came up with. Um, I've since I've been working on this, I've come up with about three or four different ideas, but and this is the one that I had started with, and so I wanted to finish it through. So upon pulling the motion light apart, um, I found that there was two circuit boards in it, one that had two LEDs and a switch on it, and another board that had an integrated circuit, a bunch of surface mount resistors, a PIR sensor, and um, that's the part that I used. Um, we've got just a two inch by four inch, two inch by three inch uh, project box from Radio Shack. I've got, this is an old power adapter from a Sony Discman that was in my toolbox. Um, I pulled the Sony label off just to not confuse anybody um, thinking that Sony made this. <laughs> um, this is a, your standard RCA composite video cable. Um, two audios and a video. It connects to the board inside. Um, this right here is the PIR sensor that I removed from the LED light circuit board um, and I wanted a way to mount this remotely. This will mount on the back of the TV. I wanted, had to mount this on the front and I wanted to mount it remotely. But I wanted to do it where if this needed to be moved or they got a different TV or they wanted this would enable you to mount this in the ceiling as long as you had a cord that was long enough. Um, how I achieved that was trying to do this one-handed. This is just a corded telephone headset cord. Uh, this is an RJ9 uh, plug, a registered jack 9. Um, and basically I had an old corded telephone in my basement and I pulled it apart. I pulled the actual jacks out and Pulled one out of the headset, one out of the base, and used those just to send the signal from the PIR to the circuit board. Um, this is, like I said, four and a half volts. Um, I do have, there it is, just a little, it's hard to see, um, just a little slide switch down here. It's just off and on, just simulating what was originally there. Go ahead and put this over. Um, rocking an instructable sticker on the back. Anybody, whoever runs across this thing will know where to go to find some information about it. Um, this board here is the board that came with the light. Um, I've made a couple modifications to it. The board originally, um, the sensitivity was very high. 20 feet away in detect motion and this was going I don't think the lobby that this is going in is even that big so basically anytime someone walked in the door it would start playing the audio and I, I didn't want that um, also <clears throat> this would stay on for uh, just over two minutes um, the literature that came with the light said it would only stayed on for 90 seconds but they must have had some miscalculations in there resistor values when they assembled it or something but um, 
stayed on for a little over two minutes and I wanted a way to adjust that. Um, so I did modify this board a little bit. Um, let's see if I can zoom in here. So this is your standard BISS0001 integrated circuit chip. Um, and you can find data sheets and I'll, I'll post one in my instructable, but uh, find data sheets on what all the pins are for. Um, I figured out that the resistor that comes off of the third pin um, controls the time. So I removed that resistor. It was a 47 kilo ohm and I've got it tied into a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer on the other side of this board here. Um, over here I hot glued just to keep the wires, provide a little strain relief, but um, it's coming off of I believe pin 15 and it comes out and there's a series there's two resistors and there's a calculation um, you do this resistor value which this one is a 2 mega ohm divided by the other resistor value and that gives your gain um, this one was roughly a hundred time gain and I wanted a way to make that adjustable too so um, same method, we got two wires here, and they run up to a potentiometer here. Um, and this is, uh, let's see, what did I use? Um, I believe a 500K, I'll have to, I'll have to check, I'll, I'll put an annotation. But again, um, this is just to adjust sensitivity, um, reduce the gain. My range now, when I crank it all the way up, it's still roughly about 20 feet with it set on most sensitive. Um, turn it down as low as it'll go and you've got to be just about a foot away from it. And it, it's not very sensitive at all. I mean, you got to really make some drastic motion to get it to pick you up. So um, it's, it's a good range for what I'm using it for. Uh, we'll move over here. Um, this is a circuit that I created um, started out as just a copper clad board. Um, I drew out my circuit with AutoCAD. Um, I salvaged these RCA jacks from an old TV that I was getting rid of, um, putting out e-recycling. Um, so I just pulled the circuit board out, salvaged that, um, and I had I ordered. This is the bottom side of a relay. Uh, it's a three volt relay, dual pole, dual throw. So basically, I've got this strip here is the common for both the white, red, and yellow plugs, and then your signal off of the white comes down to a relay pin. When the relay is powered on, it'll send the signal over, which goes out through this cord to the TV. Um, same way with the red. These three here are just the connections for this cable that goes to the TV. Um, these three are three wires that come over and connect to the board. And you've got an input, an output, and a um, source voltage. Um, I've got an LED soldered in here. Uh, this runs over to a switch so you can turn it on and off. Um, that's basically the layout of the circuit. Um, this board, I wasn't thinking when I designed this board um, with having these plugs come through the side of the case and then also this switch come out this side of the case. Um, I ended up having to drill all the holes, slide this switch into place, hold on to it while I inserted the board and had to lower it down and line up the pins and it was a huge pain. Um, definitely tested my patience. But I got it done and it worked out good. 
Um, this is one of those things that I didn't really want to do a whole lot of testing without having it in an enclosure. Um, so I wanted to get it as close to possible, as close to finish before I actually tested it. Um, I did test to make sure that it was detecting motion and it would turn off. Um, and I could tell that by the LED. Um, but the first time I tested it, I, the relay wasn't working. Um, and I kind of made a mistake when I was designing the circuit. Um, this relay was polarity sensitive and I had these two swapped. Um, I should have had this going to this terminal and this line going to this terminal. Um, I just got out my Dremel and ground off some the copper traces, clipped some leads off of a resistor and jumped those across. Um, I did a ghetto solder mask with some um, ladies nail enamel. Um, I just got a green that would match as close as possible. Um, flip this over. Got just a piece of duct tape to mark some stuff. Um, potentiometers adjust sensitivity and I just marked it for the people that may need to change it at some time. Um, one foot to 20 feet, four seconds to two minutes. Um, little LED. So that's it. Um, I did, because these potentiometers, I don't know if you'll be able to see those. Uh, pot since the potentiometers are on the bottom of this board, um, I didn't want someone being able to stick a screwdriver in there and prying around and possibly shorting something else out. So I found that a cap off of a big pin fit perfectly over those potentiometers. So I cut those to length, hot glued them in place. Um, I brought the power cable in it goes all the way over and connects here on this board. Um, so I got it all done and I was ready to go, tested it out, everything's working great. I'll, uh, I'll show you a little bit of a video of it just when I did the test down in my basement, just playing some Pandora. I'll include just a short segment of that. Okay, here's my test. I've got a Roku right here, um, playing Pandora. Um, it comes over and is attached to here. Um, the other side of this box, cable goes down, hooks into the input on the TV. Uh, it's plugged in. Here I've got the PIR. Um, I've currently got the switch off. So, Video is going through to the TV, audio is not. Um, I've got sensitivity set for, picks up about six or seven feet. Uh, I'm gonna be much closer than that, but um, I've also got time where it's right about nine or 10 seconds. And then you'll be able to watch this LED as well. Um, it's hard with music. Sometimes there's quiet spots and you can't really tell so any questions just watch this LED So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on um, And it will initialize All right, so Since then enough, I've just moved my arm So this time I'll actually just take a step. And again. Oh, we went into the screensaver mode. So video is still going through. You can see that it is a true video signal. Um, if you want, I'm gonna do a full write up, pictures and everything. Um, on instructables.com. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. Um, this is kind of a one-off um, and I'm 
basically stumbling my way through it. It's been a lot of fun. I've got many, many hours in this. Um, but it's, it's been fun figuring it out. Uh, it's been fun sourcing the parts and, you know, trying to get it into a nice compact package. Um, so, hope you enjoy. Oh, one, one thing I forgot. Um, this is, came with this project box and it was a full plate that covered the entire back. Um, this thing's going to be going on the back of a flat screen TV. Um, and I know most of those mounting holes for the mounting plates are 8mm. So I drilled an 8mm hole in there and this will just mount to the back of the TV and be solidly mounted and not falling on the floor. Um, I tried doing a little hot rod engine turning on this plate. I'm just using a quarter inch dowel rod with some polishing compound in the drill press and just I did it by hand. Um, I went a little crooked but it turned out pretty good. It's, it's kind of cool. So just a little flare on it. But um, hope you enjoyed watching. Um, if you have any questions let me know. Uh, Click that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I figured out that with this integrated circuit, it has a retriggerable mode and a non-retriggerable mode. Retriggerable means that as long as the PIR is detected motion, it will basically keep whatever you're powering it on, on until there's no motion and the value that's calculated by this resistor and capacitor right here until that time runs out. So that's what I wanted it to do. Um, this circuit is designed to be non-triggerable, which means it stays on for the amount of time, it goes off regardless of whether there's motion or not. Um, there's another set of another resistor and capacitor that determine the wait time, so to speak, um, and it waits for that amount of time, and then it's able to detect motion again. Um, in that setting, the triggerable and the non-retriggerable can be changed by this number one pin. Uh, this number one pin can either go to ground or go to positive. Um, and I got a brand idea. I was just going to grind the uh, solder trace or the uh, copper trace there and the jumper wire over here to the positive wire. So I did that, and then it wouldn't go off. Um, and so I looked at some, some schematics on the data sheet, and I figured out that the only way that works is if the number two pin is being used on the circuit or on the standard circuit. Well, on here. Um, it's not, and I've got pictures that show close up of this stuff. But number two is not being used, and pin 11 is not being used. And pin 11 is your input voltage. This, I don't quite understand exactly how the circuit is set up or how it's working, um, but I got it working in this method. Um, if I were to do it again, I would just order an off the shelf PIR from Adafruit or you know on eBay or something, or maybe even just start from scratch and make my own circuit. Um, these surface mount components are nice because they're tiny and they fit in small enclosures, but they're really, really tiny and really hard to work with. Um, so I think next time if I do anything, any more PIR projects, I'll definitely get a board that already has the, the time and the sensitivity adjustment built into it. Um, and one that makes a little more sense where you've got your output pin or your, your um, I don't remember what the, what the pin's called, but basically it goes high, it goes high voltage when it detects motion. And this circuit doesn't even use that pin.